It's been now 50 days since BP's Deepwater Horizon oil rig exploded and oil began gushing into the Gulf of Mexico. Deadly contamination has reached the shores and wetlands of the Gulf Coast. Our nation faces an environmental catastrophe. Americans are angry. In fact, the past week, the, when I was home in Vermont, I don't know when so many people have come up to me on one issue as this, saying what's happening. American people want to know how and why this happened. As Attorney General Holder and others investigate this disaster, I'm confident the facts will become known. And if criminal conduct occurred, it should be and it will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Senators on both sides of the aisle believe that those responsible for the disaster should be held fully accountable. We cannot let big oil companies play roulette with our economic and environmental resources. A region that has already suffered so much from natural disasters has yet another tragedy on their hands, this time at the hands of one of the largest oil companies in the world. Much attention is being given to the unfolding environmental disaster, but I had hoped that Americans would never forget the 11 men who lost their lives, men who have left behind children and wives, parents, brothers, and sisters. Christopher Jones, whose brother Gordon lost his life on the oil rig, is with us here today to represent all these men and these families. Mr. Jones, I'm glad you're here. And I know you're accompanied by your father, Keith Jones. And I understand, Mr. Jones Sr., that the, uh, from you that the uh, president is having some of the families of the White House uh, later this week. Well, Mr. Jones, you and your family have our condolences. I know in the discussions I've had with the president, he feels very strongly about this. You should feel free to tell him exactly what you're thinking and any suggestions you have. He actually wants to hear what you have to say. But you also have my commitment to work to achieve some fairness under the law for your brother's family and the families of all who lost their lives in this disaster. You deserve a measure of justice. Today's hearing will examine how the applicable laws have shaped Big Oil's behavior. We have to find out whether our legal system itself give some kind of incentive to big oil companies to cut corners. We'll ask whether the Supreme Court's decision in the Exxon Valdez case and the current liability caps in the Oil Pollution Act of 1990 and the Limitation Liability Act encourage corporate risk and misconduct. We're going to ask whether current maritime statutes to compensate the survivors of those killed, we're going to ask whether they're fair and whether the current legal structure tempts corporations to devalue human lives and their calculus of profitabilities. No one's life should become an asterisk in somebody's cost-benefit analysis. It is immoral. The Death in the High Seas Act is the exclusive remedy for the family of those killed in international waters. But this law does not recognize all that is lost with the death of a loved one such as loss of consortium, care, companionship. It shouldn't be some kind of a difference in the loss at sea than what happens when the BP employees are killed while working at a facility in land. And the disparity adds further insult to the 11 families who are victims of this tragedy. Ten years ago, Congress amended the Death in the High Seas Act to achieve fairness for those who perish in airline crashes over international waters. It's time we modernize this law again. Later today, I'll introduce the Survivors Equality Act to make sure these families are treated fairly. Another law that Congress should consider updating is the Limit of Liability, Limitation Liability Act. It limits a vessel owner's total liability to the post-incident value of the vessel. That law was passed in 1851 for a different time and before the Civil War. The company that owns the Deepwater Horizon Transocean wasted no time filing a motion in federal court to limit its total liability under this arcane law to the value of the sunken 
drilling rig. They want their liability limited to the value of what is now a piece of junk sitting a mile below the surface. That's perverse. And I think Congress should act to avoid this absurd result. And then, of course, there's the statutory liability cap of $75 million on consequential damages in addition to the cost of cleanup for an oil spill, and that needs reexamination. And then two years ago, an activist Supreme Court in their decision Exxon versus Baker created an arbitrary limit on punitive damages in maritime cases. And I chaired a hearing to examine the decision. I expressed my concern at the time that the Supreme Court's Exxon Valdez decision would encourage corporate misconduct. Why? Because it reduced the consequences of their misconduct to a discounted cost of doing business. That's almost like saying, we're giving you a green light to do whatever you want to do. In fact, I can't imagine why anybody would be surprised that after the Supreme Court effectively capped damages designed to punish corporate misconduct, oil companies cut corners and sacrificed safety. The Exxon Valdez decision was another in a string of business-friendly Supreme Court decisions in which a narrow majority has essentially written new law and disregarded laws enacted by Congress. The impact on the lives, livelihoods of Americans is enormous. Two years ago, we heard from Alaskan fishermen. Now we're worried about the livelihoods of shrimpers and oystermen, the Gulf people who spent decades, generations, obeying every single rule, building their businesses, having, having something they can leave to their children, and see they follow the rules, and because somebody else doesn't, they lose it all. And I've joined Senator Whitehouse's effort to overturn the Supreme Court's Exxon Valdez decisions. I'm also looking at legislation to prevent corporations from deducting punitive damage awards for their taxes, so they bear the cost of their full extreme misconduct. Our laws should encourage safety and accountability. But they do not create the right incentives, we have to change them. Whether as a result of greed or incompetence or negligence, BP's conduct has devastated the lives and livelihoods of countless people in their communities and may threaten the Gulf Coast's very way of life. It's been said by others that BP can spend millions and millions of dollars running ads saying how wonderful they are and how environmentally conscious they are, they could spend a lot more money helping the families that are suffering. American people deserve better from all big oil companies who exploit our natural resources for enormous profit. So in the months ahead, the people of the Gulf Coast will work to reclaim their coastline, their livelihoods, their wetlands, and their fisheries, and many of us here will help them. But unfortunately, the families of those who lost their lives on that tragic day will not be able to reclaim their loved ones. 11 men who were killed in the Deepwater Horizon rig deserve better. And we're gonna do, try to make it better. I pledge that to their families. I renew that pledge today. I wanna to take this opportunity to address recent remarks made by Tony Hayward, CEO of BP. In particular, he publicly stated he wants his life back. Mr. Hayward, I want my brother's life back. And I know the families of the other 10 men want their lives back. We will never get Gordon's life back. And his wife will live a life without a husband and her two children a life without a father. At the top of the United States Supreme Court building is the phrase, equal justice under law. As a United States citizen and as a, as a lawyer, I agree with that principle. Unfortunately, it does not exist in the cases of deaths occurring in federal waters. This is not a phrase that applies to Michelle Stafford and Max in this instance. This is not right, and I make this request for change for my family, the families of the other 10 men, and others who may find themselves in our same position and who will quick, quickly learn that our current laws do not protect those who need it most.